Greetings, everybody. Firebird Institute of Research and Management is extremely pleased to organize this webinar on critical management studies, featuring none other than Professor Hugh Wilmot, Professor of Management, CAS Business School, University of London, United Kingdom, as part of this international webinar series. I now request our respected Director Madam, Dr. Prema Shankaran, to deliver the welcome address. Good evening. Most distinguished speaker of the day, Professor Hu Wilmot, Professor of Management, CAS Business School, City University of London, UK, respected Managing Trustee of Firebird and Managing Director of Shiva Texian Limited, Dr. Sundar Raman, respected Management Trustee, Mrs. Sujana Abhirami Sundar Raman, special invitees, dignitaries, members of faculties from Firebird, student delegates, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome the speaker, Professor Hu. On this occasion, I'm truly happy that a high profile professor from a premium B school characterizing CMS with the difference is here with us today to enlighten amidst the hundreds of delegates. I'm sure everybody will join in saying welcome to you, to our speaker. We wholeheartedly welcome you, sir. Welcome you, sir. Thank you. CMS motivating concern is neither the personal failure or individual manage, uh, managers nor the poor management of the specific firms, but the social injustice and environment destructions of the broader social and economic system that these managers and firms serve and reproduce. The CMS movement has grown rapidly and it outreach into public sphere. Through alternatives of management stream, management theory, and radically transforming management practice, our speaker will play a anchoring role today. I am delighted to inform this August audience that more than 500 delegates have registered for this program. With immense pleasure, I welcome our managing trustee and trustee madam for this function. I humbly admit that their support and contribution to the institution is significant and we welcome you, sir and madam. I take this opportunity to extend a warm welcome to the webinar coordinator, Dr. Ram Kumar, who has been instrumental in conducting this webinar program. Welcome you. Once again, I welcome one and all for this webinar. Let us learn, unlearn, and self-educate. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam, for that uh, pleasant welcome address. Firebird Institute of Research and Management was established by Dr. SVK Educational Charities, and I deem it a privilege uh, to invite today our most honorable manager trustee of Dr. SVK Educational Charities, Dr. SK Sundar Ram, to kindly give away the presidential address. Over to you, sir. Dear friends, um, welcome. Good evening and welcome to this webinar. Um, at the outset, my compliments to Professor Ram Kumar for meticulously organizing this webinar and getting so many participants on board. These corona times have been very bad uh, in, in general. The amount of uh, impact it's done for the health of the nation, the health of the people we love and the people we know is uh, immeasurable. But what it has done is it's given us the ability to seamlessly um, connect to global experts and, and listen to them uh, without moving from, from our chairs. So uh, uh, I have to say that like, you know, there's always a blessing in disguise in everything that happens. And um, so we are here um, in a time when uh, video conferences have become passe and, and uh, we, we decline more invitations than we take. We are here in such strength. And that's primarily because of one reason and that reason is our distinguished speaker for today, Professor Hugh Wilmot, 
the Professor of Management, Cash Business School uh, from the City University of London. Uh, Professor Wilmar, thank you so much, sir, uh, for being with us here today. Uh, and this, like I said, this, this online um, acceptance of online lecturing has given us the pleasure of having your company today and, and uh, listening to you. So thank you so much. I welcome, welcome you profusely uh, for this program. Um, it might interest you to know, sir, I was just going through your CV that um, I'm an alumnus of the Judge uh, B School. I'm, I'm what we used to call MBA 8. Uh, so I got out in 1999, uh, a couple of years before you went to the judge. So um, I thought I, I would just mention that. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a few words about Firebird, the institute behind this program. And then, of course, I would, I would not stand between you and the speaker. Firebird was conceived Fast. as a corporate B school because uh, the founding idea was that uh, the backing uh, groups of the company, uh, the backing groups of Firebird, Shiva Texian and the Banarium and Spinning Mills group of companies wanted to create an executive education training institute for its own people. And that concept blossomed out into also becoming a PDGM institution where we started teaching uh, under postgraduate students about some of the nuances of management. Our belief is that it's very important to have a very strong industry-oriented experience first perspective in all that we work. And this philosophy has gone into every single aspect of what we do in the institution. Today, you might be surprised to know that our students do something less than two and a half hours of classwork in a day and about 75% of their work is engaging with industry on industry defined problems, which we believe is a more practical way of learning, uh, uh, learning management. This allows our faculty members to do quite a bit of industry oriented research, surveys and consultancy and allowing them to establish a certain level of thought leadership within their, uh, within their geographies, their target geographies and within their target segments. One of the things that we have seen in going on this journey is how diverse management thought has to be and dynamic management thought has to be today. We are living in a world where the largest and most successful companies today are e-commerce companies, technology companies, companies that we had probably not heard of or domains we have not heard of 20 years before. We are living in a world where young people spend about six hours to seven hours on, on some kind of a watching some kind of a screen on an average per day. Their value systems, their perceptions of what they want, their perceptions of what is good for them or what is desirable have changed very significantly over a period of time. And I believe that a dynamic management thought process, a disruptive thought process is required to manage the enterprises and those who are employed in those enterprises in the future. This would require a completely different thought process. And this webinar series is a way of exploring all those various facets that can actually help in each person creating that thought process for themselves. In that sense, I find critical management studies a most interesting domain because our own experience has been that we are moving away from employee empowerment to employee buy-in. Today, the managers of today, even in, I would say, small to medium-sized companies like mine, have moved more into inspiration and empathy mode than into the, and moving, I wouldn't say we are moving away from the command and hierarchy system that was there, but we're trying to create new principles and strategies that coexist with the past. Because the people of today are definitely different from the people of yesterday. I believe management thought is about people being able to see multiple sides of the same coin being able to dispassionately take multiple sides of an argument to see what are the, the pros and cons, because black and white doesn't exist much anymore. In those contests, any kind of a seminar on which a critical thinking is applied on management thought processes is, is most refreshing. And I look forward to actually learning and, uh, and uh, enriching myself in this particular case. I welcome all of you for this uh, event. Uh, it is not a conventional topic. I congratulate you all for taking that step of moving out of the box of our typical strategy and our SWOT analysis and 
and our, our conventional ways of thinking into seeing how we can do things differently. Because at the end of the day, uh, the ones who see it first are the leaders of tomorrow. I, I wish you all have a very fruitful session and it's truly a pleasure being here. Welcome once again, particularly to the guest speaker. Thank you so much. Mm, that was truly uh, thought provoking, sir. As you can see, our managing trustee is a source of inspiration by himself. And now uh, to introduce a, a distinguished speaker, I now call upon our erudite professor, Dr. Ram Kumar S. Do the honors. Yeah, it's nice to be here, sir. Thank you. Thanks for this opportunity to introduce uh, Professor uh, Wilmer. Uh, yeah, so before we start a formal note to, I mean, uh, as an introduction of Professor Wilmer, I should say that uh, two years back, there was a letter, or maybe I would say email through G Google, uh, sent to Professor Wilmer, uh, knowing that he was a celebrated authority in critical management studies. Uh, I could strongly say that he is one of the top five professors in the world to talk about critical management studies. So a young guy wrote a letter to Professor Wilmer that I'm interested in this topic, but I don't know where to start, how to start, what are the books I have to refer. There is no proper guidance in my uh, institution. Then uh, without any hesitation, within 24 hours, he replied back to that guy. And that's, that guy is nothing other than myself, uh, Ram Kumar. Uh, I, when I joined here at Firebird Institute of Research and Management two and a half years back, I had a chance to develop a small course on critical management studies. So why I'm saying this, that much uh, down to earth, also very knowledgeable, a celebrated authority in critical management studies. So uh, yeah, so in this background, uh, I would say that, yeah, Professor Wilmot is a notable authority in critical management studies. Uh, a formal note, uh, Hugh uh, Christopher Wilmot is a management and organization studies scholar and academic. Since 2005, he has been research professor of organization studies at Cardiff University and has also been professor of management at Case Business School at City University of London since 2014. Wilmot was educated at the University of Manchester, graduating with his undergraduate degree in 1972 and then completing his doctorate that five years later. Uh, he then worked at the Austin University until 1988, when he became a lecturer at the University of Manchester School of Management in 1991. He was promoted to senior lecturer in 1993 to re readership and in 1995 to be a professor of organizational analysis. In 2001, uh, he was appointed as Diago, a professor of management studies at the University of Cambridge. And then in 2005, he joined Cardiff University as research professor of organization studies. In 2014, he was also appointed as professor of management at Case Business School. Wilmot's research focuses on critical studies of management, applications of social theory to management philosophies and practices, and organizational change and control. In 2009, Wilmot was elected as a fellow of the Academy of Social Sciences. He received an honorary doctorate of philosophy from Land University in 2011. In 2015, he was elected as a fellow of the British Academy, the United Kingdom's National Academy for the Humanities and Social Sciences. So with this uh, formal note, uh, we welcome Professor Hugh Wilmot. Uh, I, I believe I have justified my role as a person to introduce Professor Wilmot. Welcome, Wilmot. Uh, Thank you, Professor. So over to uh, our speaker of the day, Professor Hugh Wilmot. Ladies and gentlemen, let us be all ears. Over to you, Professor. Thank you so much. Thank you all of you for um, those very nice words and of uh, welcome. Uh, and um, I'm so grateful to you all for setting this up. And um, I'm looking forward to being able to um, talk to you and, and then respond to your questions. Um, so uh, I'm looking to you really to control my very long slide deck. Um, and I promise that I will keep um, within my uh, budgeted uh, hour, or I try and be a little bit quicker than that to allow some time for questions. Um, so yes, um, I hope you can all see the first slide now. Is is uh, am I right about that? Yeah. If we could start with the just the the title slide, that would be that would be great. Okay, perfect. Um, so. Um, The talk is, is, is going to be very much um, around critical management studies. 
Um, and I've subtitled it um, Reflections on Thinking, but also Doing Things Differently. Um, so critical thinking in management has, has been with us for quite some time. Sorry, if you could just go to, back to the first slide. Uh, uh, back. That's it. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, so critical thinking and management has been with us for, you know, some time. I mean, you know, might well say forever. Um, um, but there's perhaps two different kinds of critical. Um, uh, so one critical would be more or less to um, accept um, conventional wisdom and work within that. Um, perhaps to refine things a little bit, to uh, improve things a little bit, um, but basically to take as given um, what there is. And, um, and another kind of critical um, reflects on that and um, uh, questions what is taken for granted uh, and tries to, if you like, um, you know, think outside of the box rather than uh, within the box. Uh, and draws on traditions of thought that are relevant for that. So it's, it's very much in this kind of tradition of critical inquiry. And that's why I've got that quote from um, Ronald Barnett uh, uh, on, on the first slide. Um, and, and it's really echoing um, uh, what we just heard from the president in terms of um, more than ever um, uh, needing uh, forms of critical inquiry. Um, to engage with um, a rapidly changing world uh, where there are multiple crises and so forth. Uh, the other thing I'd like just to mention is the uh, International Critical Management uh, Studies Conference that is to be held in India um, uh, uh, next year. Um, and there's details of that on the slide. So if we could just move on to the next slide, please. Yeah, so very kindly, um, I was given a series of questions that um, a number of you had raised. These are just a few of them. Um, and um, I'm, I'm going to try and um, ask, uh, answer some of these questions, um, at least. The talk's mainly about, you know, what is critical management studies, uh, trying to provide an answer to that. Um, but other things I'm quite happy to respond to, and we can do that in the uh, question and answer uh, session at the end of my talk. Um, so let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so this is an overview of the talk. Um, I want to start by, you know, uh, reflecting on the purpose and scope of critical management studies, um, and then uh, consider some of its characteristics and its development, um, and then think of it as a sort of movement that, um, if you like, challenges conventional wisdom. Um, and I give the example of um, uh, equality and interrogating equality in that regard and finally think about some of the the, the prospects of critical uh, management and uh, some of the pitfalls as well so if you could move to the next slide thank you right so academy of management um u.s based um, academy of management which uh, many of you will be uh, familiar of uh, familiar with um in that academy there are numerous divisions and uh, one of the divisions there is critical management studies, which was established, hmm, I guess, probably 10 years ago now, something like that. Um, and it's the most international of the uh, divisions. And as with every division, um, it has its own domain statement. So this domain statement kind of indicates what um, critical management studies, in a sense, aspires to be about. Uh, it doesn't always deliver, but nonetheless, this is the kind of uh, intent, I suppose you could say. Um, and so it's really looking to establish management practices um, and wondering whether those practices um, are, if you like, justifiable when critically examined and look and then placing them in the wider social order. So. I mean, I think we, we're more than well aware that there are multiple crises affecting us. We've already, we've heard about the, uh, the pandemic, um, uh, but, but in, in addition to that, we can think about you know, climate crises. We can think about migration crises. 
Um, you know, I don't need to um, remind you of, of, of the multiple and compounding crises that we currently face. And the question is, you know, what role um, does management have in that? But more to the point, perhaps, what role could management have in addressing all that? And um, the thought here is that, that there are a number of things that are probably, you know, getting in the way of that. Um, and uh, so, you know, an emphasis on the profit imperative, let's say, you know, um, shareholder value uh, being taken as, as the point of business, the purpose of business, um, you know, that probably isn't terribly helpful in terms of addressing these crises. And then we have, you know, the wider issues of the social order around uh, uh, different kinds of um, uh, inequality and discrimination. These things are not enabling people to flourish and not enabling people to give of their best. Um, so we're wasting uh, human talent and, and capacity um, because we've, we, we're, we're stuck in often in sort of relations of domination and exploitation. So this is a sort of diagnosis, if you like, that um, critical management scholars um, make of the current situation and are sort of struggling and striving to develop alternative ways of thinking and alternative uh, ways uh, of doing and connecting if you like coming to the bottom of this slide the practical shortcomings in management and the kind of difficulties that individual managers uh, experience um, to wider social divisions and in this case ecological uh, problems. Um, so uh, th th this is the this is the domain statement, as I say, from the Academy of Management of the uh, division, and in a sense, this is what focuses uh, critical management uh, scholarship and critical management activity. So let's move to the next slide. Um, well, uh, critical management has also been engaged in these webinars. Um, and as you can see from this one, this was very much on the pandemic and uh, governance structures. Um, uh, so I just thought I'd indicate the kind of things that are kind of going on uh, amongst the critical management um, studies community. Let's move to the next slide. And here again, um, another, um, another webinar uh, addressing um, uh, business economy and society in post pandemic times. Uh, so trying to, you know, uh, get to grips with the significance of this pandemic. What is it actually uh, telling us? What is it exposing uh, about the nature of our organizations and our capacities? Um, you know, it, you know it, it, is it time for a reset, a rethink? And critical management people would say, well, you know, we're the people in a sense who've been anticipating um, the need for significant change uh, and so we're we would say that we're reasonably well well uh, uh, positioned and prepared in terms of uh, offering uh, a, a more incisive uh, examination of the uh, the difficulties we find ourselves in so please move to the next slide um, yeah so uh, this again is a contribution here to the world health organization this is by um, an example of uh, critical management scholarship this is uh, patrizia zanoni who is the currently the editor of the journal organization um, so she she was saying you know what 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 does critical management studies uh, have to uh, offer to this this, this question uh, piece that was published in the journal of management studies so again, I'm just, this is just illustrative of the kind of work that critical management studies people do. Next slide, please. Um, so I've talked already about the conference that's coming up next year um, in uh, India. Um, the previous 11th uh, critical management studies conference uh, was held in the UK at the Open University. And um, I just thought it would be helpful to indicate the kinds of issues that um, were uh, explored and um, addressed here and you can you can see a kind of um, in, in this in this um, bullet points um, the kinds of concerns that uh, critical management studies people have um, and they extend beyond the let's say the sort of uh, regular or standard uh, agenda 
of um, uh, you know, an MBA or a business school education, um, because th there's a view that you know that that the pedagogy in business schools, both content and approach, uh, needs to be radically transformed. And I was interested to hear that. Um, you're sort of doing this, in, you know, you, you, you are uh, taking the MBAs out of the classroom and um, getting them to uh, engage with practicing managers. Um, and I think this is excellent because, um, to me at least, a lot of the content of, um, uh, of textbooks is far removed uh, from practice. Um, and uh, it, 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 it just provides people often with a kind of comfort blanket, but nothing that's particularly useful. So let's move on. So next slide, please. Yeah, okay. Um, so this kind of gives you an indication, I think, of the kinds of resources that critical management uh, studies and people who are doing analysis within critical management studies um, draw on and again you'll see that the kind of um, source material the kind of you know ideas that people work with to make sense of organization make sense of management marketing accounting operational research <clears throat> um, <clears throat> come from a different sort of uh, set of set of ideas um, and that is what is a kind of uh, innovative and hopefully um, instructive as well as uh, renewing um, about uh, uh, critical management uh, studies. There's, there's this kind of theoretical pluralism. Um, and also, you know, a, a, recognize that, a recognition that while we talk about critical management studies, um, there are continuities. So critical management studies itself can become a little uh, complacent and uncritical. Um, and so, you know, it, it is vulnerable to the same sort of criticisms that it levels against more orthodox or mainstream um, understandings of management. Let's move on. Next slide, please. Um, yes, yeah, so it, it, one of you mentioned that there has been quite a growth in, um, in uh, critical management studies uh, over the last, I don't know, 20 years, let's say. Um, and this is just a, an indicator of it. So. Um, what I wanted to bring to your attention here was not, not just that there's a, now a really quite a, a, a large volume of uh, critical work, and here with these are just a few of the, the textbooks, of course, there's a, a, a lot more journal, journal articles. Um, uh, the journal organisation, which I mentioned just a few minutes ago in relation to the um, uh, uh, a piece by uh, Patrizia uh, Zanoni, um, so that, that is really um, uh, a journal for critical management uh, uh, researchers. But many of the other journals uh, publish critical management uh, work. Um, so uh, organization studies, uh, management learning, uh, uh, human relations and, and, and others. But I also wanted to point out that um, it's not just in the field of sort of management and organization, but also uh, marketing, um, accounting, uh, and so on. Uh, so uh, critical management is 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 uh, sort of engaged by um, uh, a range of different sort of specialists across across the uh, management piece. Uh, and some some departments have really uh, sort of focused it and concentrated their efforts around critical management. The, the obvious example is uh, the management school at the University of Leicester. Um, when this is part of its manifesto, um, so in that it's it 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 it, it it's linking up um, uh, management practice with um, broader global uh, uh, problems. Uh, okay, let's move to the next slide. Um, and it's not only sort of focused around Europe or you know parts of North America or let's say uh, you know um, uh, Australia, New Zealand etc um, but I just thought I'd, I'd, I'd put this these couple of slides on to indicate to you that um, there, there are uh, you know things going on in relation to CMS um, around the world um, so here we've got examples uh, not only from from Europe but uh, uh, from China 
uh, and so on. Um, so this was a this was a, a a book which put together a few years ago um, uh, chapters that, that that were reflecting on what was happening in in different parts of the world in relation to CMS and and, and clearly um, this this would now need to be significantly rewritten because it's way way um, out of uh, out of date um, uh, and uh, uh, you know. Part of the point of, of um, having the conference in, in India next year is to extend its um, international reach and to become a bit less Eurocentric. Um, okay, let's move on to the next slide. So I now want to talk a bit in more detail about the specific characteristics of uh, CMS. Um, so let's, um, let's move to that uh, next slide, please. Um, when people are trying to um, get to grips with critical management studies and wondering what it is, uh, what's distinctive about it, um, how does it differ from, uh, let's call it more mainstream um, approaches, um, they're often directed to this article that appeared in um, uh, 2000, um, co-authored by uh, Valerie Fournier and, uh, and Chris Gray. Uh, Chris was a colleague of mine both at UMIST uh, when I was a PhD student and then um, uh, or rather when I was a lecturer and um, and also at Cambridge uh, when I was there. Um, so they wrote this piece to try and identify key elements of CMS and the first one we've already touched on which is this notion of denaturalizing. In other words things that are taken for granted are challenged, uh, are questioned. Um, so it's it's thinking outside the box um, rather than sort of staying in the box of the mainstream, uh, thinking about uh, what might be outside of that box. So um, it's deconstructing the reality of organizational life. It's questioning the truthfulness of organizational knowledge. So for example, you know, what if you open up a textbook, a mainstream textbook, and you read about scientific management or you read about human relations, um, how, in inverted commas, truthful are those accounts of, um, you know, what happened in the Hawthorne experiments or, you know, what we know of what uh, Frederick Taylor um, did. Uh, so that's the first thing. Um, to what extent is it a lot of mythology? Um, and secondly, when we come to look at how those ideas are practiced, um, what is the connect or disconnect um, between you know, what is promised by those things and what actually uh, happens in organisations? Um, so it's, it's about questioning those things and it's about trying to um, uncover or develop alternatives things that, if you like, have been put to one side um, and perhaps too swiftly uh, and consider alternatives. Um, and secondly, to, to recognise that things are changing continuously, things are on the move uh, and it's uh, necessary to engage in perpetual critique, otherwise critical management studies, as I say, becomes too complacent, too cosy, too self-satisfied, um, and becomes you know, a scholastic uh, activity. So the first thing then is this emphasis on denaturalization. Um, and it's not as if denaturalization doesn't happen to some degree in the mainstream. It's just that it's not central to that. Um, the denaturalization sort of happens, if you like, within the box rather than attempting to get outside of the box, I would say. Um, so this, that's the first point. The second point is this notion, um, and they're related, um, uh, of reflexivity. So what are the sort of philosophical underpinnings of uh, claims that are made on behalf of management knowledge? What are the ontological assumptions? What are the epistemological assumptions? How do they stack up? You know, let's have an interrogation of the knowledge claims, the truth claims um, of uh, management studies. You can see that the two ideas of naturalization and reflexivity are quite closely uh, related. Um, and then some uh, reflexivity about how knowledge is, uh, if you like, created or constructed. So that's the methodological 
reflexivity. And you know, associated with that, there's the sort of um, critical reflections on, on whether notions of, of science that have been developed within the uh, natural sciences or perhaps been attributed at least to the natural sciences, sometimes got to you know, just talk as positivism, but I know that's probably a, a, an unsatisfactory label, but I'll use it for the moment. Uh, uh, <clears throat> how, 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 how helpful, relevant um, are these for studies of the social world, of social practice, of management, of organising, uh, and so on? So um, it's about being, you know, having some more um, uh, explicit and perhaps penetrating um, conversations, reflections around issues of epistemology and uh, and uh, ontology. So this is another kind of injection. Um, from critical management studies into the whole area of uh, management and management uh, education. So let's move on to the third element, which is a little more contentious. If we could, next slide, please. Okay, so the next, the, the, the next element called non-performative intent um, is one that has been um, a lot more um, contentious within the field of uh, 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 critical management studies. So what, what do we mean here? Well, it's um, uh, the idea of performativity is one that um, is associated with subordinating knowledge and truth to efficiency. Um, in other words, taking the ends as given and concentrating on the means. Um, so don't question the ends, just try to refine the means. So that is the, the notion of uh, performativity. It's drawn from a, a, a French philosopher called Lyotard, but that doesn't need to uh, detain us here. Um, so what um, uh, uh, Valérie Fournier and Chris Gray are suggesting here is that um, critical management studies is not constrained, not constrained by the principle of performativity. It's not just about considering the means. It's also about considering the ends. Um, and and in other words, it's it's not taking the ends for granted. <laughs> Can everybody please mute yourself? Oh, I think you, uh, uh, Jyoti, please get everybody uh, muted, please. Yeah, I have I'm muted everybody. Yeah, I'm just uh, arranging I have, this. I have muted everybody. Yeah. Okay. I hope everybody can hear me now. Um, yeah, so it's, it's not just about um, refining, perfecting means, which I would say perhaps a lot of... Um, management theory and management uh, practice is, is restricted to that. It's about reflecting uh, on the ends. And I think unless we reflect critically on the ends, we are really in trouble. I mean, we can see how deeply in trouble we are as a species and as a planet. Um, because in a sense, we, for the last you know 200 years, we have been accepting the existing ends and just trying to develop more effective and efficient means of getting to those ends. Uh, so, you know, I, I won't repeat what the domain statement of the um, of the uh, uh, of the critical management studies division said, but um, it, it refers to that. So, um, it's 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 a different approach to things now. Um, uh, Valerie Fournier and Chris Gray were misunderstood, in my opinion, um, when they were saying that CMS has a non-performative intent, intent. It doesn't mean that CMS is just a scholastic activity and has no interest in performance or anything to do with practice. It's just saying that the notion of performance and practice has to be expanded to consider ends as well as uh, means. Uh, and there's been quite a bit of debate in the critical management studies community um, around this um, around this issue. Um, so the Journal of Human Relations in particular has been publishing a lot of stuff uh, on this. And it relates really to the question of 
um, what is to be done? Uh, Lenin, you know, raised that question, what is to be done? Um, and it's, it's really a question now about um, how does critical management studies actually uh, uh, address the questions of ends and change the ends uh, and that raises all, all kinds of concerns about activism and the form of activism that uh, critical management studies might take. But we'll come to that in a minute. So let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so this rather busy slide, which I'm not gonna talk to in any detail, um, just uh, indicates how the kind of um, tradition of critical management studies uh, differs from other traditions within the social sciences. So it's really concerned um, with changing things in um, an emancipatory direction. So again, if we go back to that domain statement, you'll see that you know, a lot of those things about inequality, discrimination, etc., cetera, um, is trying to, uh, 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 let's say, reduce the amounts of domination and exploitation there are in the world. So it's an emancipatory content, it's that, that's its agenda, that's what it's focusing on. Um, and it will draw in uh, other kinds of science, historical science, interpretive um, uh, forms of you know, uh, uh, social, social science and studies of management, but also the empirical analytic, the, more, the, 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 the work that is more concerned with ends. So it's not, re it's not rejecting that, it's just saying, let's have it under an emancipatory umbrella. Let's make it work for the purposes of emancipation. In other words, to, to change the box rather than just furnish the box, you know, in a more elegant way in, in terms of thinking outside of it. So um, uh, that, that's, that's uh, why I included this, this slide. It's that the, what's in red is in a sense, um, what critical management studies is uh, uh, you know, guided by this emancipatory interest rather than the technical and practical, but it's not to exclude the technical or practical, it's to bring the technical and practical within the umbrella of the emancipatory. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. So I thought it might be helpful just to give a little bit of history here. I don't wanna go into it, but I just wanted to make the point that First of all, um, critical contributions did not start in you know, 2000 or 1995 or 1992 when uh, Matt Salverson and I uh, put together an edited book called Critical Management Studies. So that was the first time, as far as I'm aware, that the term critical management studies was sort of up there in lights. Uh, and I mean, clearly after that, there was uh, more and more sort of traction and engagement with the idea of critical management studies. And, I, I co-organized the first conference on critical management studies and continue to organize conferences for uh, some while after that. Um, but there is a tradition that precedes that and um, it's important, I think, to recognize that. So there were critical contributions that uh, came well before um, Matt Salverson and I put this um, uh, edited book together in 1992. Um, the second point I wanted to make was that um, how, how that was possible was, I think, because a lot of people um, were uh, recruited into business schools, particularly in the UK, from social science departments. So, um, as you kindly pointed out, um, I went as an undergraduate to um, uh, Manchester, to uh, University of Manchester Institute of Science and Technology, Department of Management uh, uh, Sciences. And um, uh, I was taught by a bunch of social scientists you know, they had recruited some economists, sociologists, psychologists, mathematicians, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there was nothing like um, uh, human resource management uh, in those days. Uh, there was industrial relations, um, uh, but then they were teaching psychology, they were teaching sociology, economics, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the, the, the management school, Department of Management Sciences, as it was called, um, <clears throat> had not itself become managerialized, if I can put it like that. Um, they had been, they were recruiting people from the social sciences and 
So I was exposed to a kind of interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary social science degree, as a lot of people were of my generation at that time. And so we were already, you know, thinking uh, more widely possibly than um, uh, mainstream uh, thinking would be at that time. And um, in the UK, at least, there was a sort of division between um, the uh, MBA uh, offering, which was uh, also in Manchester at the, at the business school, and the undergraduate offering, which was not in the business school, it was in the Department of Management uh, Sci uh, Sciences at, uh, at UMIST. So, um, I th to understand, I think, why uh, critical management studies sort of emerged in the UK um, at this particular time, uh, during the sort of you know, emerged during the you know 80s, 90s, uh, and then became more prominent uh, after that, it's necessary to appreciate you know how people like myself um, were uh, educated. Uh, um, so, yes, broad church and generally speaking committed to some kind of uh, significant um, change uh, and so you know the, the the role of conferences and journals and so on and so forth have been important uh, in 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 those terms so there was, a, there was a kind of movement and i'll come to that you know there was a kind of movement that gathered um you know uh, uh, f force as it were um during uh, that that period so let's move on to the next um, next slide yeah, well, here we have it. This is the uh, Management Sciences Department at UMIS. It was at the top of that building you can see on the left hand side. Uh, not the most elegant uh, setting, but um, it was interesting to be in the heart uh, of Manchester and also to be in a, um, a science and technology uh, university. Uh, hence the, uh, the, 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 the label management sciences for the department. This was not a, a, a department of uh, management studies or, uh, I don't know, uh, it, it, it had to be called uh, sciences. Um, so I think I've gone over um, many of these points on this, um, this, this, this slide. Um, it, 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 for, a, for a period, for about 10 years, um, it just happened that this this department became highly significant then a lot of people from that department went and worked in other de other departments uh, warwick and you know at, at lancaster at, at bath and so on and so forth uh, and so it sort of spread out from here I, I wouldn't say it was entirely the epicenter there were things going on elsewhere particularly those of you familiar with um uh, Burrell and Morgan's uh, sociological paradigms and organizational analysis that came out in 1979. They were at Lancaster, but David Knights, uh, my very close colleague at UMIST, and myself were were in touch with with them and well aware of what they were what they were doing. Um, uh, Stuart Clegg, another name that you'd be familiar with, possibly um, was was also you know uh, of that era. Um, we we were going to conferences together with Stuart. There was a kind of network of people um, that, uh, that, that were very active and um, uh, trying to do something different in the context of uh, management and had the space to do it um, because the undergraduate programs in the UK, as I said, had not become managerialized at that time. So let's move on to the next uh, next slide. OK, so this is my idea about uh, uh, critical management studies being something of a challenger uh, movement. Um, let's see what uh, I mean by that. I mentioned it a moment ago, so let's uh, try and expand a little bit on, uh, on that. Um, OK, so um, when we're sort of thinking about critical management studies, we could think about it in a number of ways. And you'll see that in red, I'm, I'm, I'm favouring a particular way of, of, of thinking about it. Uh, as, a, as a movement. Um, but often it's considered just as an academic specialism. So I would guess that um, people in the Academy of Management, uh, US Academy of Management, who are in other divisions, let's say entrepreneurship or, or whatever you like, they would probably see, ah, oh, uh, CMS division, it's just another academic specialism. Um, you know, we've got a division on this, a division on that, um, and now we've got a division on uh, CMS. Um, so it's a kind of notion of a specialist area um, to which, um, you know, people are affiliated. Um, 
Well, there is some truth in that, of course. I mean, people, you know, identify uh, with uh, CMS. They see some strength in in having a number of other people around them. Don't feel quite as ex ex exposed and vulnerable. Um, and so, you know, probably some CMS uh, people who identify as CMS affiliates um, would see themselves also as kind of contributing to a specialist area. Um, then there's the notion of it as a brand, which is often um, you know, a little pejorative. Um, the notion that um, actually people are just uh, developing a product and, uh, uh, excuse the phone call, um, they're just developing a product um, and um, it's all about brand management and so on and so forth. Well, yes, of course, uh, there's an element of truth in that as well. Uh, um, it's about selling a particular idea, a set of ideas. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, again, it has some, some, some relevance. And thirdly, there's a notion of a genre, which would be to say, well, it draws on certain kinds of ideas. Um, it's, a, it, you know, the, it's a particular style of work. It's, a, it's just, you know, the, the, the literature, the references, etc. Can, you can identify it as, as being critical management. Um, so again, yes, you know, one can uh, one can go along with that. Um, but finally, and this is the work, this is the approach that I'm kind of more interested in, without rejecting the others, um, is is to think of it much more as a kind of group of people who are trying to do something more or less uh, the same. So it's uh, it's it's being a sort of participant and, and an activist in um, a kind of a, a movement that is out to change. The way in which um, uh, uh, business school education um, uh, content uh, uh, change the content, change the mode of delivery, uh, and basically try to change uh, management um, practice. So let's move on a little bit and explore that. Next slide, yeah. Um, uh, th this one just elaborates what I've been saying in a way, and, uh, so I don't really want to go into it in any any detail, but. The literature on social movements um, characterizes them often as low degree of institutionalization, high heterogeneity. I think this is true of uh, critical management studies. Um, it's difficult to draw the boundaries. Um, and, you know, it is, it is promoting a marginal ideology. So it's, 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 it's questioning the mainstream in, in various ways. And it is sort of, attempting to be in some way a liberating emancipator, uh, trying to um, transform um, the content of uh, uh, business school education and transform the nature of management practice. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's trying to uh, break away from uh, what, it, what it, uh, critical management studies people see as um, forms of uh, domination that uh, are, uh, leading us, you know, uh, leading crises to become deeper rather than become ad addressed. So let's move on to the next um, next slide. Uh, so an example here would be a way in which um, inequality is is addressed. Um, so um, basically saying that 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 economic inequality sort of impedes uh, human development and, 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 and flourishing. Um, so relating inequality to low levels of skill and trust, uh, as well as um, restricted social mobility um, and inertia uh, with regard to uh, climate change. So this is very much about um, trying to hold on to things as they are in order to protect privilege and to protect power. Um, so, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a challenge to um, th that kind of thinking that, you know, implicitly, I think, informs uh, a lot of um, management, uh, management ideas and what we find in management texts. Doesn't say it explicitly, of course, but I think implicitly it's about, how do, how do we change things in a way that does not really disturb the status quo? Um, it's, it's about uh, uh, reforming the uh, means, but not changing the ends to come back to what I was saying before. So the sort of questions that then get asked is, you know, 
how do businesses actually contribute to and reinforce uh, inequality? Um, how do government regulations influence business actions? Um, because obviously management and business is, doesn't sort of exist uh, um, uh, independently of other social institutions uh, and so on. Um, how does inequality frustrate uh, forms of innovation and frustrate forms of entrepreneurship that might indeed be helpful? Um, in terms of, 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 of moving us on, of, of addressing these crises that I've already referred to. Um, and it raises obviously questions about, you know, morale and motivation in a context where there are such huge differentials um, within, uh, within organisations that seem to be difficult, really difficult um, to justify. So um, it's, it, it's trying to address uh, inequality in all those ways and make connections with with a management business organization uh, in relation to inequality. So let's, let's move on. I'm also keeping an eye on the time. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, so I think increasingly critical management scholars are seeing the connections um, between what has been going on, you know, in the last 20 years or so uh, and uh, all those books that I showed you and all different journal articles that have been written and so on um, to wider um, movements. So after the financial crisis, we had the Occupy movement. You know, we are the 99 percent, which clearly was all about uh, inequality, but also, you know, raising issues about um, accountability um and you know raising issues um uh about um how corporations operate you know the governance of corporations um thinking about relationships between the, the corporations and the state uh also thinking about what alternatives there could be in terms of cooperatives mutuals and so on so um here I think are important connections in terms of um, uh, orientation, let's say, um, between um, critical management studies as a kind of movement and uh, wider social movement. So let's, let's, let's go on to the next slide. Yeah, so if you look at the Occupy uh, Manifesto from 2012, um, then there's, there, there's, there are uh, direct resonances, I think, with um, the concerns of um, critical management uh, studies. Um, so, you know, a concern about the environment rather than the pursuit of private profit, um, the concern to make things uh, more democratic, um, and to recognize that it's, it's got to be a kind of global um, initiative, not uh, just a national or, or local one, it's got to be both. Um, and also um, looking to see beyond what the current what the current situation is, what 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 activities are present that could be expanded, uh, could give us a model for the future. So, for example, I've done work on the John Lewis partnership. Um, so, a partnership model perhaps um, offers a, as an, an alternative, um, or the uh, Mondragon. Uh, cooperative movement and the cooperative movement more more generally um, perhaps offers some some ideas as to how we might make, be able to make uh, move forward in the future um, so let's next slide yeah so this is just an example of Mondragon I thought I'd give this example because it's the biggest the biggest cooperative in the world apologies for the uh, the spelling mistake I say I've got two d's in it there's only one um, um, so, you know, this is a, a huge cooperative um, based in the Basque region of uh, Spain uh, with global reach, um, committed to um, not, not just to, you know, environmental matters, but also to customer satisfaction and uh, improvement through um, competition. So it's 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 kind of it's not it's not a kind of a you know a, a fantasy of uh, idealized it's 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 very sort of rooted in practice and it and it has many shortcomings 
Um, so although, just like the John Lewis partnership, um, it is ostensibly um, uh, a kind of worker uh, owned and controlled uh, um, uh, cooperative, a cooperative a set of cooperatives, a massive set of cooperatives. Um, on examination, it, 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 it's far from perfect. Um, and so um, I refer to this book, The Myth of Mondragon. Um, and also there's a link there to um, a, a, a very instructive um, uh, article on uh, Mondragon, which looks at it through a critical lens. So this is what I'm saying before, you know, it's necessary for critical management studies to look at the things that it advocates, such as cooperatives, very critically. Um, and so uh, if you look at my paper on um, the John Lewis partnership, which is a sort of a quite a big retail organization in the UK. You'll see that it's 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 kind of you know supportive but also you know constructively critical of, of the organization. And I think that's where we need to retain reflexivity and um, to be self-critical. So let's move on. Yeah. Uh, and now again um, with the Extinction Rebellion um, again I think um, you know, that, that, that the banner says it all anyway, doesn't it? Business as usual is killing us. Um, so, you know, to what extent do we have an opportunity in business schools and universities more broadly um, to address the current crises? Um, and to what extent can we, um, you know, uh, can our knowledge inform solutions because the solutions have got to be global and they've got to be radical uh, so a colleague of mine is currently working closely with um, uh, extinction rebellion in terms of uh, the strategies that they're they're developing so you find critical management studies people and come to this again in, in a moment um, doing things that are connected to trying to you know change change the world uh in, in 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 a way for the better hopefully next slide please um and within the within academia uh, critical management studies is having some impact on the mainstream this is what i mean by mainstreaming cms so the issues that critical management people have had for some time now around let's say inequality are now being picked up by more mainstream uh, uh, management and business um, academics. And these are a couple of examples um, this, from this year, a special issue in the Journal of Management on invisible inequalities, and then uh, a, a, an issue in uh, a, a special issue again in the Scandinavian Journal of, uh, of Management. So this is where sort of critical management studies can have some yeah. impact, if you like, That's internally really as, well. as uh, external. Let's move to the next slide. And here now we just want to have a look at the prospects and some of the pitfalls um, associated with CMS. And hopefully um, I will finish talking in about five minutes. Okay, so thinking about the prospects, um, we've got, come back to that uh, domain statement that I introduced um, some little while ago now. Um, and I just want to think about some audiences for critical management studies um, and they overlap um, but the ones I'm going to consider are, are, are those that are in the bullet points there um, and I'm going to look at those in turn so let's move to the next um, the next slide okay so one obvious um, audience um, is our colleagues um, and our students so we're looking here now into the business school, as it were. Um, and um, there's always a possibility to have dialogue. It's not as if, um, you know, everybody's completely sold on one position or another. Um, it's always possible to open up students to new ideas. Um, and the main vehicle for doing that, apart from the lecture, is the textbook. So um, the, the books in the bottom left hand corner here are a couple of textbooks that um, I've been involved in. Um, one is the sort of first second year introductory textbook where we look at mainstream ideas, set those next to more critical 
um, ideas. So it's not as if we uh, uh, exclude mainstream ideas, not at all. We think students should be um, uh, introduced to those, but we then offer them this other agenda. Um, and then in the organization theory and design, that's much more for kind of uh, uh, MBAs or people with uh, some managerial experience. Um, so this is one, one, one route that one can go through um, a textbook. Um, but also, you know, one can do that through one's research, um, you know, publishing, and finally through administrative activities, you know, through, um, you know, chairing committees or being heads of departments or faculty and so on. Um, so to actually walk the talk, um, to try to transform how business schools themselves uh, are managed, uh, albeit in small ways. Um, so, for example, you know, initiating actions or supporting colleagues that uh, challenge rather conservative priorities um, or assume, you know, a sort of macho, sort of oppressive uh, style of management. So I think it's almost, you know, let's try and put our own houses in some order, um, as well as perhaps prescribing for other people. And the box on the bottom right hand corner is just is a is is an association called VIDA um, that has sprung out of critical management studies, which is a kind of support network for um, women working within uh, business schools. So uh, it, that may be of some interest to to you. Let's move on to the next slide. So another audience clearly is um, our managers uh, and we can reach them you know, again through tech books again through um through uh, 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 uh teaching but also you know through um consultancy uh and um these are these books are just some idea and, and here we get some interesting kind of overlap Okay, so here we get some uh, interesting overlaps as well. So the, the book in the bottom right corner, the Lights Out book, is actually written by a couple of journalists on General Electric. Um, but it could equally have been written by a couple of critical management scholars who wanted to write a popular book. Um, so it's, it's really about the demise of General Electric um, and uh, what happened there. Uh, and it, it's, it is really about the dark side of, of corporations. Um, so uh, you've got a, the book next to it is Dennis Tourish's book on the dark side of leadership, but it, uh, it could equally have been the dark side of General Electric and it was indeed lights out. Um, so uh, this, is the, this is another um, audience that CMS uh, academics are keen to reach um, through, for example, offering a different kind of take on leadership than is current, that, it, that tends to be presented in the textbooks or a different take on the history of management than tends to be presented in the textbooks or writing critical cases on the so-called dark side. So let's move on. Um, and then this is about engaging with change agents uh, in different ways. So at the bottom there, there's a reference to the Modern Corporation Project that I've been involved in uh, for the past 10 years or so, um, which is really trying to address the purpose of the corporation, uh, working with um, a, a law firm in Brussels as a, as a partner in this. Um, and um, I'm not gonna go into detail there, but there's, there's, there's connection, there's links there and so on that you could, uh, you could refer to the purpose of the corporation video on YouTube, you know, indicates the kind of thing that we've been trying to do, um, which is really to look at corporate law and corporate governance and think about how these have got to be changed in order to address contemporary crises. Um, the book there, Fighting Corporate Abuse, was put together by a number of us, the Corporate um, Reform Collective. <laughs> All ourselves um, that, that, that look at different aspects of um, corp 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 and corp so yes yeah, so the, these are just examples um, and then there's a, a an article um, that's come out just this year in human relations which is talking about intellectual activism making a difference as business school scholars through this kind of activist um, activity 
Um, so these are just um, really it's sort of so, this is where the interface is, I think, between the kind of social movements that I've been talking about um, and the uh, critical management studies within the business school. Next slide, please. Um, perhaps the best example of this is, is something that was set up by my uh, colleague Prem Sikha, um, uh, who's now Lord Sikha, incidentally, he's just been put into the House of Lords. Um, uh, who, who's developed this extraordinary website, Association for Accounting and Business Affairs, uh, which doesn't sound anything particularly uh, extraordinary, but if you go and visit it, I think you'll find it as quite, quite a remarkable website, which is really looking at um, accounting and auditing uh, specifically, and um, offering a critical and alternative view on um, the activities of accountants and auditors in the global economy. And the little, the, the red thing at the bottom, the, the red uh, journal there is critical perspectives on accounting. A lot of the critical work in accounting um, is published in that journal. So it's another example of, of how uh, critical work is spreading, not just from sort of organization studies, but into accounting and marketing and so on. Next slide, please. So, I also wanted to acknowledge that there are some pitfalls as well as you know uh, promises as it were and potentials and there is a danger that um, critical work becomes colonized by the mainstream um, what i mean by that is that those of us in critical management studies um, are seduced by the mainstream um, that um, we subordinate our activities to um, mainstream agendas or trying to get into top journals or feeling we have to um, uh, uh, adopt uh, conventional methodologies. Um, um, so, you know, there's, there's always pressure to conform and to, uh, you know, uh, do what your dean perhaps would prefer you to do, which is to publish let's say in the Academy of Management Review or Academy, uh, some Academy journal, um, rather than uh, do your work and publish it elsewhere. Um, and there's also a, you know, a, a, a concern about forgetting the next generation. So it's about renewing. It's about, as, as the president was saying, you know, things are on the move, things are changing. We can't stand still. We need to be thinking all the time of tomorrow, uh, not of yesterday. So it's, it's, it's about bringing the next generation on and acknowledging that the next generation have a different outlook. You know, you were talking, you know, about, about people being on their screens for six hours a day um, as symptomatic of, you know, of a change. And uh, we, we need to um, acknowledge and address those changes. Um, uh, and we need to be critical when we do embrace forms of activism. And we need to acknowledge, as Chris Gray has put in this quote here, you know, this was in 2005, and I hope he might, he might revise it uh, 15 years later. Um, but, you know, we, we need to acknowledge that it's, it's, it's a long road. It's, 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 it's a tough business um, trying to bring about change in the way in which um, corporations uh, uh, work, let alone in the way in which... Um, uh, we, 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 we work as a business school um, academics. So next slide, please. So these are just some of the takeaways. Um, uh, you know, I'm trying to suggest that there is a different way of thinking about management and by implication um, doing managing. Um, it, it, it's broadly about um, thinking about uh, or undertaking studies that are of management rather than just for management. If, if we do things that are purely for management, I think we will uh, really restrict our horizons and probably stay in the box. I think we've got to get out of that box uh, and uh, st make studies of management rather than simply do what uh, perhaps managers think we should do. So I think as, as consultants, that's entirely fine. But I think as academics, uh, we have uh, another obligation, uh, which is where I started with that first quote from Barnett on the uh, in, on the title slide. Um, and to do that, I think we need to, you know, recognise how value laden the nature of knowledge is 
and um, question uh, 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 claims towards uh, neutrality. If we don't do that, then I think you know we we accept the status quo as somehow being uh, uh, unquestionable, and uh, I think that 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 leaves us in a very um, weak position. Um, and so it's about you know moving away from just thinking about uh, management as uh, basically as a set of techniques, um, which is about sort of thinking about it in terms of empirical analytic science to go back to that uh, um, slide, that multicolored slide where I was talking about emancipation and um, uh, histor uh, historical hermeneutic approaches and, and empirical analytic. It's about trying to um, uh, transform Manage, management as theory and practice within this more uh, emancipatory uh, framework. Um, and so that's shifting away, shifting management away from being arguably more of a kind of servant of domination where there's institutionalized inequality, there's corporate colonization, there are all kinds of crises towards thinking about um, management as being uh, participating in, in, in a movement which, which takes us to a more kind of democratic and self-determining uh, self world. Um, so that's the kind of agenda that um, critical management studies um, has, and it's played out in all kinds of different ways across the different specialisms of management, as I keep wanting to stress. So, you know, it, 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 it's relevant for marketing, it's relevant for operational research, it's relevant for accounting. Um, and is trying to bring about um, a different way of thinking, but also a different way uh, of acting. So I'll leave the talk um, for there. We can just move to the next slide, um, which is, I hope, just thanking you for listening. Um, and uh, very happy to take some questions now. I think I've been about an hour, which is what I was allocated, um, but I hope I've left enough time for a few questions. So thanks very much indeed for listening. So the floor is now open for questions. And well, Professor, that was indeed mind boggling. So right from areas like reflexivity and uh, going on to touching people of social resonance, it is truly a, you know, a lot of insights on uh, CMS. Thank you very much. So ladies and gentlemen, the floor is now open for uh, questions. And uh, Professor Ram Kumar, uh, can you coordinate the same, please? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a wonderful uh, session, uh, Professor Wilmar. Uh, so uh, we have received a number of questions, almost 35 valid questions from the registration form. And almost all of uh, the questions we have touched and addressed in this uh, one hour session. So apart from that, uh, there are a few questions arised in this uh, uh, I mean platform uh, through chat box. Uh, Professor uh, Dr. S. Lara Priyatarshni is asking, is there any specific model is defined to measure critical management for manufacturing sector. Okay, so yeah, I think the answer to that question is 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 no. <laughs> um, it re it relates to this thing about performativity. I think so. Um, the kind of thing that cr critical management people are interested in is uh, kind of transformative um, rather than uh, model building. Um, so if I've understood the question correctly, there would be two issues, I think. First of all, um, is it consistent with this kind of eman emancipatory intent? Uh, and secondly, I think because of the diversity and the plurality in, in critical management studies, if it were possible, then it would not be one model. There would probably be either a series of models or it would be a kind of a very hybrid model. So um, I hope that's answered the question, um, but that would be my broad response. Yeah, thank you, Hugh Wilmer. Uh, uh, I have a question out of this answer, what you have answered. You said a hybrid model. A hybrid model in this sense, could you please elaborate more? Yes, so um, critical management studies is, I, th I would say, sort of an, am an amalgam of different uh, theoretical traditions. So um, I had a list on one of the slides which included psychoanalysis, radical Weberianism, um, post-structuralism, post-colonialism, queer theory, um, intersectionality, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, 
all of these things have a kind of critical alternative um, dimension. Uh, many of them also have quite a conservative dimension. So if we take psychoanalysis, you could see a bit of quite a conservative element in some forms of psychoanalysis. Or if you take uh, Weber's ideas, you could see some conservatism in his ideas. Um, but my, my, my point is that, the, the, is that critical management studies um, is a sort of toolbox, perhaps. You know, you, you could see a whole lot of different tools in there and uh, different um, exponents of critical management work with different sets of tools, maybe just one tool, but maybe some, you know, work with quite a few tools. Um, and that's, a, so it's when the tools come together, that's where I think you get the sort of hybrid, hybrid arrangements. Wow, thank you, Professor. And uh, one more uh, small question. When you say that it's a toolbox for different angles, uh, maybe I would say that ontological perspectives, so uh, is there any uh, difference in the methodological perspective when you uh, go with this hybrid model? So is there, I didn't quite catch that. Is there any, any difference in the methodology? I got that bit and then I, then I lost you a little bit. No, uh, is there any difference in the methodological aspect? For example, ah. when there is a difference in ontological aspect, of course, my questions, dimensions would be different. But in methodological, is there any difference when I use some tools? Okay, yes. So that's a really interesting question. So some people, I think, in critical management studies would say that you can't use empirical analytic methods, you know, positivism or whatever you want to call it, um, because that is deeply conservative. Um, others would say you can't use historical hermeneutic methods uh, because they also tend to be conservative. They don't really have much of a kind of radical uh, edge to them um, and that you must therefore um, you know adopt let's say you know a critical realism or methodologically or you must uh, you know um, uh, take a sort of critical theoretic approach from the uh, Frankfurt School or whatever um, but as I was trying to emphasize um, in that slide with, with, the, with the empirical analytic or the historical hermeneutic and the emancipatory. Um, my own view on this is that um, any methodology is potentially relevant for doing critical work. It's really how you then harness that methodology to some kind of emancipatory intent. So, you know, it can be highly quantitative, um, but as long as you acknowledge the assumptions that you're making, and as long as it, you, you, you um, uh, are guided um, and can defend what you're doing in terms of, um, you know, let's say changing the world for the better in terms, not, not, not just adjusting, but, but actually a significant transformation, then I think it's, it's you know, any methodology potentially is um, accommodated within critical management studies. Okay, thank you, Professor. Yeah, uh, there is a one more question from our fellow participant. How does uh, critical management studies will help in management education? Which part of management teaching CMS be appropriate? Okay, yeah, so there's two elements here, I think. Um, the first point I'd make is do go and have a look at the journal Management Learning because a lot of the answers to that question can be found in that journal. Second point is that there's two, there's two things here. I think there's, there's the content issue, and I've been talking largely about the content today. And you know, when I put up that slide with lots of books and relevant journals and so on, uh, that's the kind of content that um, would, would be communicated um, as part of a kind of cr critical management curriculum. But then I think there's also you know, how it's con communicated. And that to me is as important, I think, is the process. Uh, and more specifically, how do we um, engage with knowledge? I mean, do, do, we, do we sort of treat it as something that's sort of bankable? I, it's kind of a series of sort of nuggets that we um, accumulate and then we regurgitate in examinations or we uh, proudly show off as a manager, you know, I know how to 
do strategy speak and here it comes? Um, or is it actually an openness and a, a, a willingness to be reflexive and to engage and to acknowledge how little we actually understand and how little we know? That's, that's a different kind of approach. It's a different kind of process. It's a much more humble uh, approach to uh, uh, the process of learning and interactive um, rather than arrogant, rather than the master telling, in a sense, you know, the slave or the servant or the or or, or the uh, the student, um, you know, what they should know. Um, it, it, it's about a much more enriching dialogue. Um, and again, I could recommend very strongly a book by Paulo Freire called Pedagogy of the Oppressed, um, where he explores these 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 issues. So not just about content, also about process. Yeah. Great, great professor, thank you. And there is a one more question from Mr. Tej. Uh, sir, could you please briefly throw more light on praxistic theories and the theory praxis dilemma with respect to CMS? So this was thread, shed more light on the practice, uh, practice theory praxistic, relationship. Praxistic, theory and praxis, no sir. So yeah. he's asking more light on praxistic theories and the theory praxis dilemma. Ah, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, yeah, this is at the heart of the matter, isn't it? Let's face it, okay? So <laughs> it's in a sense the most important and the most challenging question, um, how we connect theory and practice. So, you know, one thing we need to do, I think, is, is not to separate them too much. So what I mean by that is that if you take the practicing manager, they are, you know, they, they are being guided implicitly by some kind of theory. So their practices and our practices as educators are implicitly guided by, by theory. So, you know, practice and theory, you can't really get, as they say, a cigarette paper between them when you think about, you know, the practicing manager or the practicing academic, okay? But then when we look at theory, we can see how theory is developed in certain contexts, certain practical contexts. So a manager is likely to develop certain kinds of theories because of the context that he or she is in. Similarly, as educators, we are likely to develop, you know, certain kinds of theories because of the context we're in. I, I said, you know, I, I became the kind of academic that I am because I happened to go to that Department of Management Science as lecturers were basically talking take, uh, teaching social science I mean that, that that's the context um, so theory and practice intimately related if that's the case then in order to change practice we have to change theory and critical management studies is primarily about changing the theory in order that the practice changes but that's a challenge, isn't it? Actually to transform practice through theory is a massive challenge and people are resistant to it. So, you know, I try and teach an MBA class. I'm not, I'm not well received. And that's not surprising, but it's, you know, that's, that's what the, the challenge is to actually offer sorts of theories that are potentially transformative of practice and accept there will be pushback, there will be resistance to that. So um, that would be my answer to the theory question, uh, the theory practice question, which is really absolutely central. Yeah, thank you, Professor. And there is one general uh, question from uh, one participant. Uh, is there any scope for research in CMS? Uh, I think she is, is asking after listening to your lecture, especially the last chapter, pitfalls and challenges. So even beyond the challenges and pitfalls, is there any scope for uh, research in CMS, she is asking, I guess. So what's the question? Uh, is there any scope for research in critical management studies? Critical management. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there any? Yeah, there's plenty. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely massive <laughs> scope <laughs> for it. Um, so whatever your field is, I mean, obviously we, we haven't got time to go into that, but whether you're, you know, you're working, let's say in accounting or marketing or wherever it may be, um, 
there is already an established body of work in critical management studies. So um, the first thing would be to take a look at what people have already done um, and then think about how you could do it better. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, um, get on board. Uh, there's plenty of room. Yeah, uh, after that, I couldn't find any valid questions, sir, Professor. There are general okay. questions uh, like advantages, disadvantages of CMS. Uh, yeah, this is the question. Uh, would you like to address this, Professor? Oh, say it again, sorry. Yeah, uh, can you explain about advantages and disadvantages of CMS? Ah, yes, okay, yeah. Well, I think I've touched on that already, in a way. Um, <laughs> If you're talking about doing it as an academic, I'm just going to take the question as, as you know, if you're a, if you're a PhD student or if you're a you know a member of faculty, um, what are the advantages of getting on board CMS and what are the disadvantages of getting on board CMS? I'm going to take that as the question. I may not be the right right question, but I'm going to take it that way. So, so I would say, well, the, let's look at the advantages first. I think the advantages is that there's plenty of work to be done, as I've already said. Um, there are people who, um, you know, are actively involved and are committed and are there, you know, as a sort of support network for doing that work. So that, that's important. Um, in terms of pursuing an academic career, then it's not as difficult as it used to be because there is all that network, there are journals, there are spaces, etc., etc., for it. And there's a growing interest in it. Uh, the other advantage, I think, is that it, it, it is highly relevant. It's highly pertinent for um, the challenges, the crises that we're currently facing. So my view is that it will become increasingly uh, valued uh, it, as business schools have to adapt uh, to what is going on. They will be looking around to changing their curriculum uh, and introducing ideas that up until now have been on the margins, but I think will potentially become more central. Until that happens, there are disadvantages, undoubtedly. You know, it is an uphill struggle to get one's ideas uh, uh, listened to and, 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 you know, uh, and engaged because currently, you know, business schools are very, very conservative institutions in my experience. Um, and, and, and so trying to introduce, you know, innovative ideas or innovative approaches, um, you know, can be difficult. And it's difficult, not least because the, the most highly regarded journals in the field are also deeply conservative. Uh, and I think, um, you know, that the, the, influence, the influence of North America on business school education um, is is very unfortunate uh, and the internationalization of that I think is very unfortunate particularly through the academy of management uh, I think the all, all these things are, are, are uh, not helpful uh, for um, the development of, um, of of critical management ideas and practice uh, so that, that that's why it can be a bit of an uphill struggle yeah uh, there is a last question from Mr Tej uh, sir, you mentioned unconventional methodologies in CMS in your talk. Can you give some examples? Okay. Yeah. So um, I suppose, you know, uh, critical management people would, would be interested in all kinds of methodologies, but um, probably um, inclined, for example, to ethnography in a way that mainstream uh, researchers tend not to do. Um, so trying to get as close to the phenomenon as possible. Uh, so if you take, let's say, uh, examples of managerial work, um, uh, Tony Watson's book, uh, In Search of Management, which is an ethnography of work, um, is an example uh, of that. And another example is um, David Knights and Fergus Murray's book on Managers Divided. Um, so, you know, uh, th that's one example. But... Another example could be, you know, that um, critical management um, scholars have been interested in visual me methods. Um, so using visual um, video cameras and so on um, to do to do their to do their work. Um, it's it's really trying to um, uh, facilitate this emancipatory intent 
Uh, and so the methods will tend to be adopted that facilitate you know, that objective. Uh, last but not least, last only one question from uh, Professor Balaji Subramaniam, a young researcher also. Uh, it's a very valid even I have the same question, Professor. Uh, we do not see many scholars working in critical management studies, particularly in B schools in India. Uh, so anyone interested and want to work in this area do not find much guidance or support. Any suggestions on how to move forward particularly for PhD students and early career scholars? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so people elsewhere in the world have, have wrestled with this problem um, and sort of begun to overcome it. Yeah, so you could look at, you know, let's say Italy, or you could look at uh, Germany or, you know, Europe, where, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, it was the same situation. Um, so what can be done? Well, it's really about um, reaching out, as you've done here to me, um, but in other ways as well. So I've, all, I've, I've stressed how at the academy, if you, if you can get there, or even if you can't get there, if you can be a member, there's the critical management uh, division. Um, anyone's you know, able to join that division, if they're a member of the academy, then you, know, you, you can become an officer within that division without that much difficulty. Um, so there's all, all those sorts of um, ways of, of doing it. And then you know, just contacting scholars, um, in that critical management uh, community, and we're talking thousands of people now, uh, who have similar research interests, and see if you get a response. I mean, I, I, I think because you know you you have to be reasonably committed to critical management in order to sort of put your head above the parapet, um, and so the chances perhaps are slightly better of getting a response from critical management. Uh, not, not necessarily. I'm not saying we're all uh, angels. We're not. But, um, you know, th th there's probably a good chance of, you know, reaching out and being able to make um, contact uh, and getting support uh, in that way. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, that's all, Professor Jyoti. Over to you. Oh, that was fascinating indeed. <laughs> So I'm duty bound to propose the word of thanks also and a huge thanks are due uh, to Professor Hugh Wilmot. Uh, that was amazing what you have done and the area of uh, CMS and you really walk the talk. That's what we need to say. So ladies and gentlemen, I think we all have to give a thumbs up to uh, Professor Hugh Wilmot for the intrinsic work that he has given uh, from the fabulous area of uh, critical management studies. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you indeed. Thanks very much for inviting me. It's been a pleasure to be able to talk to you and also to respond to um, uh, two questions. I see there's quite a bit of chat here. Um, <laughs> so I, 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 I may be able to just respond to some of those things in a few moments. Yeah, surely, yes. And uh, this would have, wouldn't have been possible, uh, but for our uh, managing trustee, uh, Dr. S.K. Sundaram, who's always been a pair of support. And uh, we wholeheartedly thank him uh, for uh, delivering the presidential letters also. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, our thanks are due to the uh, trusty madam, uh, Sujana Abhirami, a charismatic leader who constantly motivates and urges us to stretch the extra mile. And uh, we are always following her footsteps also. Thank you, madam. And uh, our gratitude due to our respected director, Dr. Prema Shankaran, who's a wholesome leader and who renders encouragement at all times. Uh, thank you again, madam, to yourself. Uh, well, uh, my pleasure is mine to wholeheartedly again thank Professor Dr. S. Ram Kumar for having spearheaded, spearheaded the whole initiative of this international webinar series. So, Professor, as we can see from the chat box, uh, we have a lot of uh, responses, and this webinar has indeed proved to be uh, very educative and informative as per the impressions given by the participants. And uh, we also sincerely appreciate and thank all the professors, heads of institutions and all the academicians at large, the entire management fraternity, uh, and all our guests and invitees uh, from the different parts of the world who attended uh, through Facebook and other online platforms. And we also thank our own students, our learning associates of Firebird for the active involvement, and also for having uh, engaged with us in this initiative. And finally, I thank all our IT team for having facilitated the smooth functioning of this team. A wonderful uh, to have all of them as a team here in the area of uh, management studies. So thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing you all again uh, to, in the next set of uh, Firebird International Webinar Series. Thank you, Professor. And uh, if at all, you can take your chat box uh, in things, you can take it forward.
Okay, thank, thank you, thank you, you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Jyoti, that was good hosting. Uh, Professor Ram, yeah, yes, great, great, very well organized. Thank, thank you, you, Professor, thank you once again for joining us. It was a real pleasure thank having you. you with us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, see you all again soon, I hope. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you, Professor. Look forward to it. Thank you, Professor.